Welcome back to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the series 10 Pounds, 10 Times. This is a mini series that I have created to help document my personal journey with weight. And I want to take you along for the ride. Now, for those of you that have been listening, you know that I started the series last year in 2023. I did a few episodes and I fell off the wagon, um, so to speak. And I have renewed my weight loss goals. I really, really, no, not want, um, have to accomplish these, okay? Because let me just tell you this. Losing and gaining the same 10 pounds is the definition of insanity, right? Like, I I can't do that anymore. And 2023 for me was that year where I literally lost and gained the same 10 pounds back and forth. It was like the yo-yo ping pong back and forth. And I can no longer do that. It's, it's no time's up. No more excuses. We're going to get this done. We're going to feel better. We're going to look better. And my hope in doing this series is that it keeps me accountable to my goals, but it also, you know, maybe in these episodes, it motivates, inspires you in some way. And so that that's why I'm doing it. And so 10 pounds, 10 times, why the name? Well, the name 10 pounds, 10 times is because my personal goal is to lose 100 pounds. And I'm a big believer that when you look at goals that big, like losing 100 pounds, it, it feels like you don't even want to get started before you start because it's monumental. It is a huge, huge task. And so my goal is to lose 100 pounds. I will say I am almost at the halfway point, which is really exciting. And I'm going to get there. It's not, it's not I hope I get there. It's not maybe I'll get there. It's like, no, we're going to get there. And it's completely in my hands, literally hand to mouth. <laughs> if If that happens, I'm in control of that decision. And so... I want to just share with you every week, you know, my stats, how I'm doing, what my numbers are, what went well, what didn't go so well, what I can do better next week, and just make it real short and simple. And, you know, maybe some little inspirational tips and nuggets that we can weave in there as well. And when I say 10 pounds, 10 times, it's a lot easier to look at losing 10 pounds at a time versus a hundred pounds at once. And so I look at weight in these decades, right? Like the two thirties, the two twenties, the two tens, the two hundreds, wonderland. Like that's how I look at it. And so just to give you some back, you know, backstory here on my journey, I've been overweight my entire life. I was overweight as a child. I, you know, I can remember at 11 writing a journal and saying I'm going to write a book about myself about my life story and today's the first day because I'm going to start losing my weight and at 12 I had gone on my first diet hey Richard Simmons I'm looking at you and I continued to diet yo-yo diet um, just the whole cycle what I call the yo-yo diet body hate shame cycle for years till I finally got to the point where I'm like I'm going to figure this out like there has to be more to this journey than, you know, eat less, move more. If, if that was how easy it was, then we would all be thin. And so that's what started me off on my personal development therapy journey and where Irresistible You was born from. And so over the years, you know, I learned how to lose weight in a way that wasn't out of desperation. It wasn't in a, it wasn't coming from a place of hating myself. It wasn't coming from a place of like, you know, feeling miserable and doing things that are really hard. I wanted to learn how to lose the weight for the last time. And so along that journey, I had my daughter and I gained almost 70 pounds with her and I lost all but 10 of it. And then I had my son and I gained 70 pounds. (laughs) So When I talk about this journey this time around, that's really when I started, I started this is after I had my son, it was the end of 2020. I was 270 pounds the day I had him. And I would say early 21 is probably when I really started to get going. And then 2021 was the hardest 
uh, most challenging year of my life so far. That's the year that we found out our little girl who was four at the time has type one diabetes. And when I tell you your world stops, right? Like I have episodes, you can go back and listen to, to that journey, but 2021 was a really hard year for me. And you know, I didn't gain anything back. I stayed the same, which was cool. Right. And then in 2023, I just started bouncing around the same 10 pounds. I don't even know why. Well, I do know why that's not, that's not true. I know why, because I allowed circumstances, stress, life to get in the way of my own personal goals. Right. And sometimes when you're being pulled at both ends, you're burning the candle at both ends, you're stretched thin. The last thing you want to do is sit around and figure out what to eat. It's easier to just eat whatever. And so I gained and lost the same 10 pounds, which is very, very frustrating. And I can no longer continue that behavior. I'm done. So I started to um, like lose again last year. Uh, and I want to just share with you like where I'm at. So when we say my starting weight, we're going to say my starting weight is 270. Okay. And currently, as of today, I'm at 223.7. Now, let's talk a little bit about holiday weight. Right before Christmas, like on the 19th, I have my, my numbers here, I was 224, okay? I made myself, I always, I don't have a problem getting on the scale. That's one of the things I've overcome is I will immediately get on the scale after a major event, holiday, vacation, what have you, because I want to know. And so on the 2nd of January... I was 227. So that was up by three pounds. I recorded this episode last week and I don't know what happened. My audio malfunctioned, my video malfunctioned. So I just said, screw it. We're going to start this week. And here we are. So as of this week, my weigh in, this is January the 10th. I am at 223.7. So I am feeling happy about that. Things are trending down. They are actually trending down. And like I said, I go in 10 pound increments. So my big goal right now is to get out of the 220s. And when I look at that, I mean, I can lose four pounds by the end of January. If, keyword, if I am in control of my choices. And if I don't allow circumstances to derail me in any way. So that's very empowering to know that, you know, while you may not be able to control what's going on around you, your life, your job, your family, whatever, you do get to control the food. And that feels really good to know that by the end of January, I mean, we could easily, I'm easily, right? It's, it's not easy, but easily be in, you know, the, the two tens finally. And so now that I've started to build that, here's the other thing, momentum, right? Now that I've started to build that momentum, I feel more motivated to keep going. So when you have those moments of decision-making, right, where you're hungry, you're tired, you're stressed, and you have to decide between ordering some shit on DoorDash or cooking something at home that's going to be healthier. When you feel like, or when you start to see that momentum, I am more motivated to say, no, this decision, the cooking at home is going to get me to that 219 by the end of January. So I have started to see momentum. I'm very happy about that. Let me share with you what I'm doing because I think that's really important for you to understand. I am very transparent in my process. And so I am taking injections. I am taking weight loss injections. I am on terzepatide. I just started the 10 milligram. And I have to say, it wasn't until this dose that I am really, really starting to feel the effects and obviously see the results like trending down a lot faster. So I started last summer with semaglutide, lost some weight kind of fell off the wagon a little bit, got off the injections, and then started back on um, with terzepatide. Um, it was like late, like late fall, I want to say, something like that. I'd, I'd have to get my, my numbers out to really see. But you have to titrate up to 
the higher doses. And for some people, the lower doses, they call it a loading dose. They just don't do things as quickly or if at all. So my husband is also doing it. And we started at the same time and he has lost, he's almost at 40 pounds, like men and weight loss, whatever. <laughs> but you know, before I started the injections, the reason I went this route is I was putting in the work. I was cutting back. I was watching what I was eating. I was journaling. I was tracking and making the hard decisions, making the sacrifices, because that's what they are. At the end of the day, it's a sacrifice, right? And my weight wasn't moving. Or doing all the things I just said, it was going up. Literally every day, the scale would be up and up. And it's like, what, what gives? So for some of us out there, um, you know, you can do all the right things, but the weight just doesn't fall off. And so these injections, you know, I, I've actually wanted to quit because I thought this isn't working. I'm not seeing the results. And now I'm starting to see some kind of momentum excuse me, indigestion. <laughs> that might be a side effect. I don't know. But I definitely can tell, you know, I, I feel very full. I had a very small lunch and I feel I had actually threw most of it away. Um, I feel very full. I don't think about food because it turns off that they call it food chatter in your brain. I don't think about food. I don't fantasize about food. I throw away most of my meals. Like I'm eating, obviously, but like I had um it was Chick-fil-A. Like I've a number one, which is like a sandwich and fries. I can probably maybe eat half of the fry and the sandwich, and I have to throw the rest away because I physically can't get it down. And you know when you physically feel full, but you want to eat, like you want to overeat, you want to emotionally eat, you want to binge you'll do it anyway. Like I physically can't get it in. Like I'll start gagging. It just, it won't go down. There's no way to get that food down. And so, you know, for someone who has struggled since they were in elementary school with thoughts of food, emotional eating, binge eating, yo-yo diets, for someone that has really struggled, um, you know, these drugs are a game changer. They're not a miracle by any means because you have to put in your, your side of the work. But if you feel me, if you've been that person, I have to tell you how grateful I, I feel about it to be able to not have those obsessions. So I'm going to stick with it, see how things go. We're going to get to the, the two tens. That's the goal for January. And as far as following plans, like... I've been a Weight Watcher for, I think I've, I started Weight Watchers for the first time in 2003. <laughs> so we're talking 21 years, you know, on and off throughout the years. And I love their plan. I think it's a great way to learn how to eat. Like I definitely learned how to eat through Weight Watchers. I learned how to portion control. I learned how to make substitutions. I learned how to, um, there's just a lot of different things, right? And as of lately, I mean, I still have the program. I'm still a member. I still pay. I have the app. I haven't been following the program. And I think I want to do that. I want to get back into it. I want to journal. I want to track because that gives us extra data so we can figure out where we need to make some tweaks. But to be quite honest with you, the last few months, I haven't been tracking anything. I just eat less. So if you were to ask me, well, what are you doing besides the injections? What are you eating? I'm kind of eating what I've always eaten. I just don't eat all of it. So I'm able to enjoy like something sweet that I love, have a bite or two of it. And I don't want any more. Like <laughs> I could cry thinking about how that could never have been possible for me. You know, and I've done so much research on these things. I can do a separate podcast um, if that's something you want to know more about just on the injections themselves, because that's a whole nother topic. But that's a miracle to me. Like if you if you know, you know, like that's that's all I can say. If you know, you freaking know. Right. So 
I don't know yet if I'm going to track. I, I don't know if I'm going to follow the Weight Watchers plan, but um, I've just, so here's the thing. I, in my program, Irresistible You and my podcast and all of my material, I'm very big on teaching like how to redirect thoughts, feelings, actions, all those things around food. And when like, when this food noise is turned off, I've been able to do the thought work so much easier to make those decisions. Like, and I don't feel like I have FOMO, I'm missing out or, you know, I just don't care. Like it's been fantastic. So <sighs> we are going to just, you know, keep it going and get to a healthy weight. So I had set my, my, obviously I said 270. So my first goal was like, I just remember being at 170, looking really good, feeling good. And while that's probably overweight for a lot of people, I am naturally thick and curvy. So, and muscular. So like, I'm not, I think I might be good there, but once we get there, we can decide if we want to keep going or if we're happy. But my first goal is get out of the two twenties and we are not going back like two thirties. I said goodbye to them last year. We are done with that. 220s, we are going to say goodbye to you in January because we are done with you. We d we no longer want you to be here. <laughs> and then my second goal in between right now is to hit Wonderland, to see that one on the scale. Like, I haven't seen that one on the scale in years. And I really need to see the one. So I, I want to get to Wonderland. And when I sit here and think about it, you know, I could be in Wonderland by springtime. Like, it's felt so unobtainable to me for so long and it's felt so out of reach, but I'm in control of that decision. I'm in control over whether we get there or not. And, and I want it. I really want it. I want to feel better. I want to look better. And, you know, weight loss has a lot of benefits. We know that. And this journey for me it comes from a healthy mental state space because I know that losing weight is not the end all be all. It doesn't cure all your problems, but it sure as hell cures some of them, right? Like we know that, but I also know that just because you lose weight doesn't mean, you know, X, Y, and Z amazing things are going to happen for you. That's not how this works, but it's going to make me feel better, look better, good for my health, all of those things. We know that. So, I'm going to be popping in here once a week to share with you where I'm going, where I'm at. And again, as of today, we're looking at January 10th, the week of the week of the 10th, I am at 223.7 and I hope to be back with you next week and saying that I am, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to lose four pounds in a week. It can happen, but we will be closer. We will be closer to 219 than we are today. And so that's the goal. So I hope that you enjoy this series. Um, if you do, you can continue to listen in two places. You can listen to it on the podcast. If you're a visual person, I am also uploading these on video. I'm, I'm still working out the kinks on how to do video because it's not my like wheelhouse, but I am uploading these things onto YouTube as well. So if you want to watch, you can watch. And then you can also keep up with me at Irresistible Icing over on Instagram. So, all right, guys. Let's push forward. Let's hit our goals. Let's do what we have to do. And I'm going to catch you here, same place, same time next week. Bye, guys.